This is Nicole. I'm just going to go around the room and introduce everybody, and then we'll start just because we have a lot of new faces. This is Nicole, our new health nurse. Jean Delios, assistant town manager. Actually, should, everybody should maybe introduce themselves, I guess, huh? Right. <laughs> Andy. Uh, Andy Friedman, uh, select board liaison to the board of health. Eleanor Shankoff, now on the board of health. First time. <laughs> I'm Edev, board of health. Lara Romanowski, board of health. Heidi Pfeiffer, board of health. Kevin Saxton, board of health. Christine Brown, board of specialist. Okay. Um, since Kevin has the longest tenure with the board, I'd like to open the meeting to public discussion. And I'd like him to open the meeting to public discussion. And then I will be opening the voting for the chair position. Okay. Um, is there anybody in the public that would like to say anything? There are, keep in mind, uh, opportunities if you're here for Five Duck Road to speak when that comes up on the agenda. So if it's in, if it's regards to that, you can wait, but if it's something else, seeing none, okay. Okay, um, um, in that case, I would like to open the voting for the chair position. Yeah, so I, I figured we, we could simply have an easy discussion in, in regards to this. Um, procedural wise, it's always a little um, interesting with, with uh, having a three person board because none of us have spoken in, in regards to it, and this is the first time that you get a chance to. So we should actually get a chance to um, discuss that. Um, with that said, I do want to thank John Costigan, um, who is uh, the chair, uh, or was the chair for several years, and stepped down. Uh, John did an excellent job, I believe, when he notified us at the last meeting. It was not while the cameras were rolling. So I think this is the first time that the public is hearing that John stepped down uh, as chair for the Board of Health to pursue um, uh, a, a venture with his wife down in, I think, New York City for uh, a number of months. Washington. Was it Washington? DC. Okay, yeah. Washington, D.C. for a number of months, and he wasn't going to be available, so he decided to step down. So uh, I, I personally want to thank John. John is a great guy, was a, a big advocate uh, here in town, and was just a, a really good chair for the Board of Health. So I want to commend him and uh, publicly thank him for his service that he had. Um, in regards to that, um, we obviously do have now uh, the need to have a chair elected. So there are three of us um, that have a voting right that can be elected to the chair, myself, Emmy, and I'm, I'm forgetting, is it Ellen, do you have the full voting membership? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. And Lara, you're the, you're the new associate. Okay. And Heidi is an associate as well. Okay. Everybody's been sworn in, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Um, so is that, is, is there anybody want to discuss um, chair positions? I'd do it. <laughs> uh, you know, I think this is kind of an exciting time because we've had so much turnover. We now have a time when we can really make the board what we want. Um, and I just went to uh, Massachusetts Association of Health Boards does annual certification programs. And I just went to the um, the orientation for new members. So I think I've got the basics down now um, of you know the requirements that the board has to fulfill. Um, and I think you know together we could come up with some good ideas for some maybe new initiatives. Anyone else? Um, I actually did want to offer my my uh, hat in the ring as well. And. Um, I mean, I certainly appreciate you stepping up. It's an interesting uh, role to take over uh, um, the chair of any board. Where we have had so much turnover lately, I think um, both new health agent really within the last year, um, yeah, new members tonight, yourself, you were a fairly new member as well. By all rights, I'm a very new member um, to the board where I've only served for about a year and a few months here as well. So, um, you know, my thought was where I have a history of uh, working on opportunity that I may offer some insight as the chair. The chair of a, um, what I would call probably a function of how you want the meetings operated, you know, how, how we want to schedule things from the standpoint of putting items on the agenda. And, you know, my history in the town, I think, relates well to that. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I've worked with John and Kevin, and Kevin has some experience as a um, a selectman, right? Correct. Right. And um, I think it would be a good um, leadership position, but I think you could still bring up definitely issues that you think are important. I, I mean, I'm, I haven't met you before tonight, <laughs> but, but you could try to make things different as well, like um, Kevin saying, it's not really like, it's not 
like he's going to tell you what to do. It's more just when the meeting. Oh, that's not but, in my role. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just more. I don't know. I've only done it about a year, um, and now I'm, I was on the board a little less than a year. But now okay, I'm just an associate member. But um, but that might be helpful because I didn't know that much about how the board ran when I started. So um, it's a little helpful. <laughs> And I think it would be actually an interesting idea. I know typically this board has not um, turned over. Um, for example, Andy on the uh, select board every year, they have a new chairman. It's something that's been, uh, I don't even think it's necessarily policy, but I think it's just practice. Did you guys make it we, policy? We didn't have a new uh, chair here, no. Um, right, you had, a, typically the Board of Health would, would have, the chair would run for a number of years, correct? A couple of years, yeah. yeah. I actually like the policy of having a, uh, a new chair every year. I think, it, I think it keeps a fresh perspective on, on um, all boards and committees. So, you know, uh, if I was elected, I, I frankly would think that would be the right course of action to do. Yeah. And go, go from year to year, just like uh, some of the other boards do. Yeah, that might be good just to read some, you know, new or, you know, maybe yeah. and just yep. like, um, might not be a bad. Rather than having long tenures. I yeah, think that's John's always a bad idea. Because John's done it for a long time. He did, yep. Yeah. You can also be taxing on the chair to do it for a long time as well. Can I ask a question about the role? Is it more um, the person who would decide the agenda, uh, or is it more decision-making about medical or health issues? That the chair does the chair have sort of deciding power? Is that what no, it's the majority of the board has deciding power over anything that we do. Obviously, we're a policy board, so we set we make policy, and that requires the uh, majority of the, of the board time. Whether it's a, there's three people here in a given night or two people here in a given night, you have to have the majority uh, rule to, to vote on anything not in or out, I guess, for that matter. And so, it really is more, I see the role more of a um, as kind of somebody who's running the meetings uh, for the most part. From a procedural standpoint, I see the, the role as chair very much in that regard. And it, it is setting the agenda items, but that doesn't mean as a board member, the full voting member, if you have an agenda item, by all means, you know, you can send that into um, Lauren, she can put it on the agenda. So it's not like no board member that has that role, if that makes sense. It does, thank okay. you. Yeah, John used to do a chair report. I don't know if you guys, did you guys always do that? Yeah. So a chair report would be, like, at the beginning of the meeting, he would discuss, um, you know, some public health issue that's, you know, a current public health issue. Don't give updates on flu, you know, status, and things like that. But that doesn't mean that no other member has time to say right. whatever they want as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, the only other role is maybe when you're reporting to the Board of Selectmen, is that the chair? But I was able to go to a meeting that John did. The chair did, do that. Yeah, that John course. did, but I was there to help support him, but he's the one, I think, who spoke. So that yeah, ideally the role. chair should be there, yeah. but it doesn't include any board member from being there. Any other questions, or what we'd like to vote? I'd ask that we vote with a show of hands, and unfortunately, that does go to the vote of uh, the full members. We have the nominations on the floor. We can't have actual nominations. Uh, board members have to you nominate can ask us. as many questions yeah. as you want. Oh, okay. So, so you want oh, on the floor for nominations. Oh, so the doors are on the floor for nominations. Would anybody like to nominate anyone? You can't. Oh, I can't. Oh, I don't think you can. Oh, yeah, only Eleanor Kelly. Yeah, I've never said anything. Oh, Kevin, okay. Eleanor, and Emmy are okay. the voting powers. And you can't nominate yourself. <laughs> don't talk to me. Wait. <laughs> I don't think you can. Can you? Is that not true? They volunteered. volunteered. Oh, so I have to nominate both of them if, <laughs> if I so choose. <laughs> Ooh, is that, is that true? Yeah. I, right? You, Andy, you what, can nominate each other. I didn't think you could nominate yourself. Can you nominate each other? I don't you remember. You know, it's every true. member can uh, yeah. nominate. Especially on a three-person board. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. Talk about your constraints. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to nominate both of you if that's the question. <laughs> we could do that and then and vote each one separate. Okay. Did you have more questions? I, do have though? More questions. I guess uh, if you could just say a little bit more about why you want to have that role. I mean, I know you did a little bit to kind of bring new ideas. 
Yeah, for a few ideas. I think, um, <laughs> I, I, so I, I guess I was officially on the board in June, so I um, Yeah, bring new ideas. I think it would be good to sort of improve communication a little bit amongst board members in a way that does not violate open meeting law, but would, I think things have been a little bit off since since at least in my time that I've been on the board, um, where I don't think we're all getting the same information. Um, so I, I think it's really important to make sure that everyone is getting the same information, that we're coming to the meetings, all with the same basic you know, knowledge of what's going on. Um, and and I think you know it'd be good to you know provide some guidance to to other board members uh, in terms of again in terms of initiatives or, or you know what have you. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I should ask you the same thing. Certainly. <laughs> um, so I, I I come to it from a different um, aspect. I do not have um, a role in health in, in the uh, professional world. Um, so the reasons I came to this board I, I were a couple of them. <coughs> Mainly, I wanted to bring a little bit more of a structure. Originally, when I came on this board, it was um, I felt it was lacking some structure um, amongst how the proceedings were going in regards to holding meetings and getting um, the work done that the town really needed to get done at the time. So I came from the board um, a year removed from being um, a selectman for three years in this town. And so I, I kind of came to this from a different angle, which at the time I felt like it needed. I, I still feel like it needs a, a little bit of a structural um, presence moving forward, even more so now where there are a lot of new members um, on this board. We do have a new health, health agent that's been on truly. We um, welcomed Nicole on, on board just uh, very recently. So uh, as a, one of our nurses here, it, it's just having that newness, I thought, you know, having somebody who understands the structure of government, how, how these boards and committees are formed and their roles and their policies and procedures that they're supposed to follow would be a good thing to have us um, at, on the board. And that's why I would also think it'd be a good thing to have as a, in the role of chair. Again, my thought would be too, not to monopolize the chair. I don't, I've never liked that. I know a lot of boards do it that way. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's, it's personal preference. I think it's having turnover in the chair is actually, I think it does bring fresh perspective and ideas. Um, and a lot of times you see things from a different lens when you are in the chair and it helps, it helps you be a better board member as well. So if you're done, if you have more questions, you can. <laughs> We're throwing you right into the fire tonight, Eleanor. So this is pretty simple. It, this is if you if you want to just nominate both of us, you can do so. Just make a motion. Say I would like to make a motion to nominate both myself and um, and Emmy to uh, the chair, and then we can vote each person individually. And when we get, you get two two or three hands for one person, <laughs> the day is done. <laughs> and no one will be offended. <laughs> No one will be offended. <laughs> um, well, then I would like to make a motion to nominate both Kevin and Emmy um, for the chair position. Do I need to use our full names? I don't think so. I think we can record it as the full names. As you, as you, I can rec we can record your motions being the full names. As a point, point of order, um, in the board, one can nominate oneself. It is. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dan. And, and I assume if it's good enough for the board. Yeah. And then I think it would be um, we asked if there's any further questions, comments. Yeah. No. So we can both five show of hands. Uh, you want to call the first show one? Show of hands, yeah. Yep. You're gonna call them individually. Yeah, what individually, correct? Okay. Um, Emmy Dove, going alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> Myself. <laughs> Kevin Sexton. <laughs> so Kevin, you are the board of the health of health. And in lieu of that, maybe we should get a oh here we want to show of hands. Now we should get a vice chair. Have a vice no, we don't have a vice chair. We always say we're going to have a vice we chair. We always say, yeah, I think I actually was voted <laughs> the vice chair to a position that doesn't exist yeah, maybe. a year ago. So I'm recommending that we appoint a vice chair at this time. 
I would appoint Emmy Dove the vice chair of public health. I think we have to have an election. We have to, I think we have to elect a vice chair, not appoint, right? And the nominator vote on it? Yeah. Thank you. So you want to nominate Emmy? I nominate Emmy Dove okay. to the vice chair. Okay. okay. We need to vote on that. So by a show of hands. Three zero. Okay. Um, now that that's out of the way, <laughs> thank you everybody. Uh, we do have um, a couple things on the agenda tonight. We have um, Five Duck Road um, to talk about in regards to having a chicken coop. We have uh, a simple discussion um, that I asked to have put on here, Board of Health Policies and Procedures. We can go over that a little bit more at the time. We have the Health Agent Report, uh, Road and Activity Update. We have several minutes that we have to approve of. Uh, we have a tobacco um, grant that we have to talk about in regards to inspections ongoing in the future. Uh, we have natural gas infrastructure letter. Thank you, uh, Emmy, for putting that together um, on the board, as well as the Contra Pest update. Uh, that I know Emmy has that as well. Um, and then we'll also have a revised 2019 meeting scheduled to look over. Um, so with that in mind, we take over and start with five duck road. Are you handling this? Yep. Um, so we want to get the top of it. Um, however you'd like to do if you want to if you want to give us the, the, the run of it first and we can hear from the applicant so five duck road would like six, and six chickens and they apply for their building permit all the paperwork is in the packet they apply for the building permit the cage the coop everything has been approved by building if it's on their lot the letter did go out to all the neighbors letting them know that she was going to be applying okay. and what she was looking for and we have a few members of the community here that would like to speak as well okay is the yes so this is a public hearing this is a public hearing yeah. okay do we have anything we have to uh, officially read Jean? i didn't see anything like that no hearing. no okay. it's, it's not like the other public hearing got where there's a notice okay. it's a legal ad the neighbors got notified so that was the Okay. All right. So, um, is the applicant here tonight? Yes. Hi. Right how are you? Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you have um, in mind for this? Yeah. Um, so I'm new to the neighborhood. I just moved in a month ago. Um, so I would like to have a chicken that would place with some hands in the neighborhood, um, in my backyard, and it will be contained. So I have a group. Um, so that the chicken will be confined most of the time. Um, so basically, I want to like I love to collect eggs, but first of all, I really like chickens. They are my best friend when I was young. You can understand that. Um, so I'm glad I'm like a first-time home purchaser. So this is the first time I own a house. So I really want to like raise chickens. Okay. All right. Um, well, before we hear, any, hear anything from uh, any board members, is there uh, obviously it looks like there's some public comment that people would like to discuss. If you would, just do me a favor, just stand up and tell us uh, your name and your address, just so we have that for you. Right here. Okay. Uh, Andrew Napolitano, 24 Audemars Road. Okay. I'm in the letter to the property. Okay. Um, Oh, no, I thought you, if you wanted to say something. I just, do. Oh, yes, go right ahead. Um, so, being, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the board for allowing me to make some comments this evening, and I'd also like to welcome you to the neighborhood. I apologize. I didn't have an opportunity to meet you in person uh, prior to the meeting, but welcome. Um, my, my concerns actually have been mostly answered in the information that I received uh, on the meeting. Um, Primarily, I wanted to understand a little bit more about the dwellings, where the chickens would be kept, also where they would be located on the property. Um, the neighborhood has been established for over 45 years. Um, people in the neighborhood have spent a significant amount of money uh, making outdoor spaces. Most of us have pools. We spend a lot of time outside in the, uh, in the summer. And uh, obviously, my biggest concerns are noise from the chickens and any kind of nuisance uh, like that, as well as uh, any odor that may come, obviously, if you're you know, having uh, people outside don't want to be smelling that all the time. Uh, one of my remaining concerns, however, and it is interestingly enough also on the agenda today, is the uh, road and activity. Uh, 
my family uh, many, many years ago raised chickens, and uh, they did it for a living. And uh, my dad, who uh, owns the house, is extremely concerned about the rodents. Uh, it's definitely a problem. Uh, we we are concerned about things such as the food uh, attracting them. Uh, we I have just recently had a. Uh, Pest uh, person come to my home and uh, had mentioned that it is a growing concern in the neighbor neighboring communities and also um, highly recommended that if somebody's going to have chickens in an abutting property that I get um, I get uh, precautionary measures put in place, uh, which is approximately a thousand dollars a year to do so. And uh, these are really my concerns. I want to make sure that will roads be attracted to waste that is going to be disposed of in the garden? Uh, will they be attracted to the chickens? And will it prevent, uh, excuse me, to present a problem in the neighborhood in the future with attracting uh, other things such as uh, not just rodents, but you know, uh, birds, you know, well, prey, or all this kind of stuff. Um, coyotes, I don't know. I'm not sure what they attract. I just wanted to have an opportunity to uh, voice my concern about that. Other than that, you know, I really personally don't have an issue with it. I think it's a great idea if somebody would like to raise chickens in their, um, in their yard. I just wanted to make sure that this can be done and respond to that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the list? We'll go right down the line if you don't mind. Okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 you're next. Go ahead. Yes. Um, my son lives in North End of And just, would you just take your name? Oh, I'm please. sorry. He depends about 34. Thank um, My son has chickens in his neighborhood in North End of And they have a problem with hawks. Hawks have flown right down. They can't, they have a little shit, so they can't put them out in the yard anymore because these hawks, because of the chickens, the hawks come right down and grab the chicken. And they have a fenced in yard, so they used to put them in the so well, but now they can't because they're afraid the hawks will come. Right. So um, I think, and we have a lot of little kids on that street. There's like nine little kids, all boys. And um, I, I think that Reading's homes, where we are, is really close. You know, it's not like if you have two acres and you're out somewhere. We, we, these people live right next door to them. What, what's that road off of? Okay. Um, and um, I just feel the animal problem, the rats. Like he said, I know they used to have them in the beer, and people used to have a serious rat problem because of them. I don't want to see rats in my neighborhood. And like I said, there was a lot of little pins, and they would fit in with animals. Coyotes, they could bring coyotes. I don't care about chickens. I'm going to bother them since what's going to come. Well, that's sure. what I think of, and I, you know, read up on that too. seeing the hawks and I see them every day but again I don't know when they be trying to swoop down you know I don't know enough about what they will or won't attract sure. but your property is open to the wooded area and we see coyotes there all the time I don't know if you're aware but there's all these coyotes um, I don't mind seeing them either in a distance but I don't want them coming closer but yeah they're always there with that what kind of the Wooded area? Yeah, lots of coyotes. The wooded area is in the back, right? Just yes, so everybody yes. knows? Yes. Yes. So that's up by where the food is. Just, yeah. But we know, you know, just, we've seen coyotes lots of times. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if we would have a way of that. But not really if it wasn't chickens, but I'm not sure what it's going to be. I, I don't know. But uh, I do have the pans for chickens, so they will be inside. Okay. So it's going to be enclosed on, yeah. on the top yeah. as well? Yeah. Okay. Are they going to be out at all or all in the coop? Um, I think it will mostly be in the coop and the kernel. But I do like when I'm around, you know, when weather's good, I'll have them out. Like I walk, people walk dog in the neighborhood and I would like they to have some free time. But that's very occasional because it's only behind them outside. And in the daylight. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. of course the white ones will be coming out in the daylight. Right, right. Can I ask a question? 
Sure. Um, that's about uh, number 34 out of 100. Okay. You're going to have these chickens in this coop, am I right? Mm -hmm. And then you have this open dog fence cage. Yes, it will be. It's a pop too. And, but you're going to have the chickens in here. Yeah. For how long? For how long? During the course of a day, ten minutes, ten hours. Oh, in the in the kernel because it's enclosed, so I can put them there, you know, as long as I want. This is enclosed. Yeah. The kernel is enclosed. Yeah. Do you intend on taking in more chickens or ducks or geese or eggs? No, no, I, I only raise chickens. You only raise chickens. You're going to stay with six chickens? Yes. Six chickens. Okay. Well, so we have certain uh, guidelines of how many you can actually have here in town. So that's uh, something the town meeting has established. How many? Six. Six. Six is the limit. Yeah, that's correct. So this is something that town meeting has um, has voted on and voted in favor of having uh, allowing it to have. So this is something that obviously that um, is, is in our purview to obviously to approve. But it's already a policy that's been set in place at, at town meeting that, that specifies. Um, I think even the size of the cage that you can have as well too. Building covers that. Yeah. Okay. So there's very specific uh, things that have been talked about and discussed as, in regards to. Um, being able to keep um, things like chickens uh, and, and other animals on your property. And each one's kind of has a specific idea of the item. Can I ask a question? Sure. Does anybody have chickens in their neighborhood? How are they? Fine. Fine? Fine. Yeah. Do you bring rats? Certainly, uh, we haven't had any rats for a while now. So the one thing I'd say... They're not louder than a dog or a, a leaf blower or something like that. In regards to the rats, too, have we had any... Um, any occurrences over in their area? I don't recall that. No, I'm on that side, no. I'm on that side, so. Okay. So <laughs> no. typically, rats rats don't uh, migrate far away from where their um, where their habitat is right now, where they're where they're nesting, where they get their food source. And even for their food source, what we discovered, they don't go more than I think a few, like maybe even only 100 yards or so away from um, their, where they're nesting. So it'd be a difficult leap for them to end up there as a result of it. They could end up there for numerous other reasons, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't work as a result of just having the chickens there. I mean, I have some concerns because there's an open easement um, that is directly on my property, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, there's a lot of that there. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's, there's a brook that comes all the way through to the back. It, you know, they have been there in the past. My question is, will it draw them more? That's my problem. You know? Right. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the chickens, I really, I am not opposed to the chickens. I am just more concerned about, um, you know, I wanted to come to the meeting to be on record simply because, you know, obviously if it doesn't become a problem, um, I will make a complaint. And that's really all I have to say about that. Do we get a lot of music complaints <coughs> for? I haven't gotten one yet, no. But I would be the person when it yeah. would be a lot of problems. Right. How many um, families have chickens do you know about? About 25, 20. Yeah, so chickens. Mm -hmm. Well, they're all supposed, only supposed to have six. Correct. But somebody said that they know somebody that has 12. So we've been out there then on, on top of it. And yeah, on top. They get inspected every year. They get inspected every year? Okay. So we'll be going out next month, actually. Okay. This, yeah. So well, they do inspect them. <coughs> it, it, it is a yearly inspection, yes. So if that happened, it's happened in the last year. I just feel like in Reading, the houses are very close. With it. It's not like you know you have a lot of leaves on both sides. Of you. So the the I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. For just so everybody understands what what the board here tonight is looking at is the approval of this. Um, but essentially, we're what we're approving is something that's already been approved. It's already been approved by the town meeting, which should be the body that you'd want want to um, discuss with. You can talk to your town meeting uh, precinct uh, members that if they if you wanted to change, you know, the way we have it structured, it would have to happen at town meeting. So there there is mechanisms in town to, to do that, but that's not an purview tonight to decide whether it's too close or not. It, it fits under the guidelines and the policy that's in place, and that's what we're looking at here tonight. Yeah. So it's it's. I just don't want you to think you know um, we're we're right. we're not listening to you or not hearing your and your um, your feelings in, uh, on the subject matter, but it's really kind of outside of our purview. And 
that regard because it's something that's already been approved by the building department, which has stringent protocols in place to approve these things. Well, well, yeah, the meeting was about three years ago, actually. Yeah, I think right. the town meeting, if I recall, being on the agenda then, yeah. Oh, so it's approved, so there's nothing we can do or say. We just um, in, in my estimation, I'm just one board member, but my feeling is if they've met all the criteria that has been established by town meeting and through the um, through the building department, um, to me, it, it's something that's allowable, and, and I'm in favor of allowing it on those grounds because uh, it has met all the criteria that's been set in place. Just a small point of order. Um, it's actually a town meeting that I know of hasn't voted on chickens. Um, it's a boards of health are. It's in the Board of Health Regulations to grant, um, and there is Section 2.0 in, in the Board of Health Regulations, and it describes what they can have, what they can't have. They can have more than six if they're granted a waiver. Um, all that information is in the Board of Health, or, or in, the, in the Board of Health recommend, uh, Regulations. Can I ask you another question? Well, I just wanted to bring people. Well, it's, it's like regulations, but it is town meeting that established parameters. I was on that town meeting. For chickens or for uh, for for it was part of the part of the bylaws. I thought it was when we were doing all the bylaws structures. for structures. Yeah, yeah. how where you can have it, how many feet, right. all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, you don't have chickens. I had them, yes, but you don't have them now. No. We, when you did have them, what you do with them at all? Uh, uh, I composted it and on the garden when it was done. So it never leaves the property? Uh, not mine. It was too, too good for the soil. <laughs> so are we then assessing whether or not there are any health risks? or Because we wouldn't be changing the structure then, because that's already been approved by building and all that. We would just be examining whether or not we think there are any health risks. Correct. Of having to change it. Well, if we see any rats and I need wood, can we come back and complain? Yes. Yeah, my, my concern was, my concern was really to understand the placement of the coop, where it was going to be on the property, um, any nuisances um, that may present themselves and what the process is in the event that there's a complaint. That's really all, you know, I, I felt that it was approved by the board and uh, I, I didn't really come to contest that as much as I did come for information. And if there are any health um, complications that arise, our health agent, Laura Velasquez, is the person that you would contact. You wouldn't have to wait for a meeting. We, we only meet uh, once a month, so you wouldn't have to wait for a meeting to, to do that. We do that instantaneously by calling Laura. Very good. Denise, did you have anything you want to add? Um, sure. Um, I Denise Gayton, uh, 21 about right next to you. <laughs> um, I, and I, again, as Andrew said, I am not opposed to the chicken. I was more concerned about what it might bring and rodents being the one. I don't know much about them. The only thing I did read was that um, how you store the feed and not leaving feed out in the coop overnight was kind of a way to prevent the rats or attack the rats. Um, do you have, I know it said it was going to be stored in the garage, but do you know how, like what sort of container or? Oh, it's a metal container. It's a metal container. Uh, and all the feed will be removed from the coop before dark, or is um, there going to be feed left? I yeah, see. Usually, I think the chickens are so hungry after they finish the you know, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, those are really my only concerns. It's just the attraction of the right. And also, where the coop I plan to put is actually away from all the Oh, yeah, where the, garden. Garden. Where the existing garden is. Right, right. Okay. Any board members have any questions? Yes. Do you have children under the age of five? No. Well, I'm going on our street, though. We have a lot of little ones. I was just asking because the risk of salmonella is higher. Right. Right. Um, right. Five children. What we do, we have a lot of children that are under five. Street. And that's another concern that I was, you know, they play out all the time. So they have right there. I don't think they're a cat. <laughs> well, the, the salmonella would be, I mean, you could wash the egg off and handle it and cook it properly, and that would get rid of the issue there. So if the kids weren't actually handling or eating the eggs, then I don't think that would be an issue from the standpoint of salmonella under five. Yes, it is. 
Did you have something you want to say? Oh, just, um, you know, just when we were talking about hawks, I mean, I've lived in Reading 29 years. I mean, I've seen hawks dive down and kill baby bunnies that are just like, and also my brother-in-law's dog was attacked by coyotes, was killed, well, brutally injured, like, and they came onto their property and got a small, fairly, I mean, a small dog. So, I mean, it happens to other, they, you know, just, um, we do have a lot of, we have, we have a lot of foxes, you know, so there are, that's why I'm, I think as long as the chickens just to protect them, like you have to be out when they're out or otherwise, you know, I, I, I know someone that had chickens and, you know, if you leave them out without anyone there, then they'll come, the coyotes sure. and foxes, so. Yeah, we just don't want to yeah. draw, yeah. right, you know, because obviously we're, they're contained and, uh, Predator, predator animals find out that they're there on a regular basis. There's been nothing, I don't think, it could be the coyotes, but I mean, they don't travel one or two at a time. I mean, sometimes there's 30, 20, 30 of them. I was in Wilmington for quite a long time, and there's very, very significant packs of coyotes that gather. Not such a concern, I think, with the chickens, but just to draw to the neighborhood, I think it's a problem. There's a lot of domestic animals in the neighborhood. People have cats that go out at night. Sure, it could happen, but it can happen in a much greater frequency if there's, you know, much more uh, animals there. So that's, that was my only concern. But I, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Um, that in mind, I, uh, do we have to have motion to approve this? Or, no, is it, I'm not really sure. I haven't seen this one. Yeah, this one, I'm not really sure. Probably I'll not a bad us. idea. Okay. Barring that understanding, we'll um, entertain a motion to approve the chickens um, as it has been laid out through the building department for Five Duck Road. Second. Okay. All those in favor? 3 0. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. If there, if there, obviously, like I said, if there are issues moving forward, folks, please call Laura. Of course. Let us know. Well, okay, great. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, uh, Board of Health Policies and Procedures. I just will go over this real quickly. Um, I don't want to take up a lot of our time here tonight, but rather set this meeting for a future agenda item. Thank you. I thought it was a good, good thing for... I'm sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Just don't forget to call um, conservation. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have this. Okay, thank you. Um, I thought it would be a good thing for us to maybe have a discussion at maybe even that next meeting or, or at least in the next two meetings just in regards to uh, policies and procedures, how the board uh, operates in town government, uh, you know, communications, how it all works, um, where we do have a lot of new members, myself included really, I mean, we have a young uh, board of health, quite frankly, from a veteran standpoint. Um, it would be good, I think, to just roll this at, at a future uh, meeting where we can put it together and kind of not so much go point for point on them, but have a, just a general discussion in regards to how uh, typical handling of everyday things that come up or board meetings and, and, and things of that nature. I think it'd just be helpful. I know it'd be helpful to myself, certainly. Um, so I only put that on there just as a uh, talking point if you want to discuss a little bit of tonight. You can, otherwise we can just say that we can have it for a future meeting. Yeah, I can put together a little summary. So the... Massachusetts Association of Health Boards, uh, some of their presentations from that certificate program are online, okay. but not all of them and not the orientation piece, unfortunately, but I can try and put together something that can just sort of go out to everybody as just a summary of what was discussed and maybe okay. that'll give people be great. Just a backbone to work from. Okay, that'd be great. And then we could put it, we'll put it on for a future uh, meeting that depends on. <laughs> no, that should have to be and then I should send it out to everybody. Yeah. Correct. Is there any way we can... Send it direct? Like, either send it direct or have like a Google Drive or just, not like an email, but just for documents or papers not. or like a repository. So generally, we always tend to lean a little over the top in regards to open meeting law procedure, where even if it we could do it one way or another, we always have said, well, let's just here do it in this, in this regard to leave no doubt mm -hmm. that, there's, that there's no compliance issues there. Um, so running it through Laura is probably the most unfortunately efficient way. This brings me back to my, my dread of having a three-person board no, um, in, in regards. So we can thank the state first. 
for setting that up. Um, so the state. Well, the state. The state we decided. Change, we can change that. Uh, we can change that in the charter, right? It would have no to. Easy it, it, it's no easy task. It would have to, but that's where it would have to be yeah. changed. Yeah, it's a very involved is, process. Is it? In the charter. Well, when's the next? So there's mandatory updates to the charter every ten right? years. Every ten years. Where? Yeah, to be a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. okay, we a long way to go. Yeah, I was going to say. It can be done. It's yeah. just it's not something that can be like. Just, yeah. yeah, the thing, yeah. I, the thing I don't like about it, I mean, is it'd be great for two members to just bounce yeah. stuff off of one another yeah. in between meetings to say, is this something we should bring over to the full board? You know, yeah, that's where it really comes in handy. Yeah, when I was at this this event, that you know, talking to other uh, members from other boards, it was they were sort of shocked that we had a three, three member board. <laughs> <laughs> they were, I mean, smaller towns had five member boards, so yeah, it was interesting. But that is something that we should definitely put on for yeah. a future charter. Uh, it would next be charter nice. If there's a five-person board, it would make much more sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, if you could put something together, that'd be great. And we can put it on for whichever is probably the more, um, the lesser filled items for either January or February, whichever's going to have less items on it, but we can put it on for that one of those meetings. Um, brings to the health agent report bar. I was wondering if before we did the health agent report, if we wanted to skip down to um, the gases that way, because David Zeke is here. And he oh yes, okay. as well. Sure, we can do that. We can take that out of order. I don't any, not two. Emmy has prepared a draft letter to go to the governor. David, you, you brought this to us. Did you see the letter? I've not seen the letter. Okay. You know, let's do a couple minutes. A couple minutes. <laughs> okay. And, well, they the letter. Just give them a chance rather than just. I mean, I'm not here to approve the letter, right? Well, I know you're the one who brought, really brought it to I the board, so you may want to have some some input after seeing the letter. Um, yeah. Well, well, we'll give him a couple minutes to do that. Well, why don't we do the LB report? Okay. Oh, Okay, the first thing on the health agent report is our new nurse, Nicole. Nicole is going to be working for the health department for approximately 10 hours, roughly three days a week, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. She is flexible as far as, you know, if we have a flu clinic, if we have other things going on that, you know, we need her for, and she's also willing to. So she's willing to switch her time, and we're willing to accommodate the fact that she does have another job in the evenings. And <coughs> This is Nicole. <laughs> so I've been, uh, I'm an OR nurse as well at Mass General Hospital. I've been there 25 years. I had my bachelor's in nursing. And this opportunity came up, and I thought it might be nice to get out of the operating room for a little bit, see people who are awake. <laughs> Everybody in writing has been really great welcoming. Jean and Laura have been great. We've done quite a few flu clinics for the town. Um, people in the town are really a lot of fun. You know, the older people especially, they're a lot of fun to deal with. We've done the senior center, we did the fire department, the police department. So, um, you yeah, know, we've been you know, getting my feet wet, finding out about public health and getting it ready to go. Uh, welcome. Right. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for her? Or? I do not. I've actually had the chance already to, to uh, meet Nicole. Shot. She gave me a flu <laughs> shot. Me too, you can. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to go see me next year. <laughs> Can't wait. Okay. The second thing on the list is our inspections. As I stated earlier, we will be starting up our animal inspections. Mm -hmm. We're doing our routine food inspections, reinspections, complaint calls. Um, both the inspectors and myself are doing those constantly. As she stated, we have been doing quite a few flu clinics. We have actually tripled our number of flu vaccines from last year. Okay. <laughs> that's, really, that's, that's really impressive. We've done a lot of uh, How many do we have a total number? You know, of, of top of or even a uh, ballpark? It's gonna be four to five hundred. No, until uh, five. Yeah, we're, we're at <laughs> six where wow. really okay. my close yeah. is seven or eight. Okay. Because we're waiting for some other stuff to come in. Good job. Um, 3B is the coalition that we belong to that um, is our regional thing, so that's a combination of Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and we work together in case there's ever a disaster so that we're ready and we have you know, all our ducks, ducks in a row and we're ready to go with emergency preparedness, so we're meeting all our deliverables, all our meetings, <coughs> everything that's going along with that so far has been on point. 
Okay, um, and, and just for the, for the new members, and I asked you this early, so it was even for myself, 3B um, is, is a multi-town uh, kind of emergency response readiness amongst the, with the health, so it's it's a, it's really a good concept. Hopefully you'll never need it type of uh, right. response, uh, but it's it's really kind of a cool thing to have that you're, you're discussing with the local towns and boards of health and health agents right. around here. You know, what do you do when this happens? How are we going to manage it? So, so we all got called when Andover had the explosions. The explosions. Fortunately, they didn't need everybody, but we were all ready. Like they called all of us at home and everything. So we all worked together. Is there any like communication with like the city or the state? Like, or is it purely just a town consortium? No, we have collaborative. We have a liaison that reports to the state. Oh, okay. So we have to meet all our goals to her, and she brings them up. Yeah. Training. Um, Emmy did go to MAHB. I also wanted to, so she can talk about that part, aspect of it, but I did want to mention that in talking to Emmy about this, I found out that we do have a domestic violence and dating group in Reading out of the police department, and they would be happy to come talk to us, and they'll work with one of the officers, Christine O'Shaughnessy and Sandy Silka. Is that correct? Silka. Um, <coughs> that they would be ready and willing to come to any board meeting and talk to us, and they gave us a few brochures that give us a little bit more information about what they do. You can also get the information from MAHB, but this would be more of a teach the teacher type thing, so that they could come in and talk to us and explain all that. We also have our CASA in writing for anyone that's not familiar with that. That's our outreach that deals with our substance abuse and works with other towns and other communities organizing things to, you know, hopefully you don't need it, but it's one of those things that, again, is here and available. <laughs> I might not have enough of those that gave you one. <laughs> but Erica runs that division, and she would be willing to come talk to everyone and explain everything as well. I'm going to write a lot. <laughs> I talk fast, so let me know if I need to slow down. Um, we belonged to the Mystic Valley Tobacco Alcohol Program, which we do no, no longer belong to, sadly. But we did. I did speak with the woman who was running the program, and we have a contract that I provided. Did I not? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, a contract that would cover us for everything. <coughs> I think it's a, a surprise, surprise. A quote. Yeah. Oh, a quote. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what they do is they go in and check all the retail stores for signage, make sure all the, all the tobacco is purchased in Massachusetts, it all has a stamp on the bottom of every pack of cigarettes and everything. So that they make sure that they didn't buy it in New Hampshire and they're selling it for an off charge. So they check all that. And then they have co compliance checks where they have um, young teenagers go in and try to buy right. tobacco products. So this would cover us for the youths, the cost of anything they would purchase, mileage, and all the compliance checks so that we would make sure that no one in the town is selling tobacco to anyone underage. Okay. This is relatively inexpensive compared to right? what yeah. I thought it was. Yeah. Shh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was surprised too. I was like, what? But, so yeah. the grant, was, was it just like a time period that we lost the grant? Is that basically what it was? The letters cut back, right? And so they had to cut out, they had to cut out two communities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they cut out Stoneham and Reading. Yeah. Was it a funding thing? I'm just trying to, yeah. this doesn't right. seem like a whole lot yeah. of money on the table here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Did, did they do anything mighty mo? I'm very curious to I'm find out. I'm not 100% sure. Did you mean why? Well, you're asking why did we get kicked out? Yes, that's okay. exactly uh, what I'm looking for here. Yeah, I was <laughs> wondering I the same thing. Because I can't see it on paper anywhere. Else. <laughs> it, says, uh, it says, in fact, two recent rounds, Reading didn't have it. Oh, so because we, we were do, everyone's we were doing, doing their responsible role. Ready, have no good punished. So these letters that I'm handing out is exactly the letter that's in the package that okay. I made a copy of for everyone. But okay. Okay. Were addressed Thank to you. yourself, so I just brought it for you. Right. All right. So moving forward, then this is something that we need to um, vote on a contract Please. for. Yes. So um, we do have the funds. 
So we put that on for the next meeting to have a discussion, have co contract uh, looked at to vote on. Is that, would that be kind of the sense of the board to keep this moving, paying for it? Yeah, does it include things like cheese or baking? Yeah, it covers all the okay. tackle. She knows everything. Do we have any adult, or vape, adult tobacco or vaping stores in that area? We had an application, a guy called today about possibly opening one. Well, now that the jewel has well, left. Yeah, might not be worth the farm, but oh wait, sorry. So jewel seller jewel, is gone. <laughs> no, so jewel, uh, I think it was last week maybe, jewels pulled out, uh, voluntarily pulled out of uh, convenience stores and gas stations. I think uh, everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. So their offices were raided, and very shortly thereafter, they did this. I don't know, grand gesture. As <laughs> We've got nothing to hide. <laughs> we're all on the up and up. <laughs> so, is it possible to vote on it tonight so we can get her started, or do we I'm put it off the next that. month? So are we sure that it covers jewels if jewels don't have tobacco? I'm just asking because I, I know you're I think we probably would need to see a contract. It has a lot of Well, it's um, a standard town issues. contract. Yeah. It's the scope. Oh, it's our contract. Like, yes. Well, okay. We are yes. contracting okay. with I the vendor yeah. okay. directly. So it's not their contract. It's no, ours. It's ours. Got it. Okay. And that we, changes. What okay. we do is we take the, the standard town that. contract yeah. and we attach yeah. the scope. So it's really the scope that um, is something we really wanted the board to weigh in on and make okay. sure. Okay. And the scope is exactly what we've been doing? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. No changes at all? Okay. Okay. I, I, I have no problem with that contract and we're not changing the scope of what we've been doing. I have a problem with that. And this would keep us doing the same amount mm -hmm. of inspections, exactly how we were, exactly like the same other towns, so that no one would slip in through looking to find out readiness and doing inspections and slip into ready. Sure. Yes. And it's for a full year? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? So I'm going to make a motion to um, allow Laura to enter the contract with, is it, I'm looking for the company, is there a company name here? No, it's not. It's just directly her, maybe? Yeah. Maureen Busby, oh, the yeah. program no, coordinator. With, yeah. yeah, Maureen Busby. Um, <laughs> for one year <coughs> to implement uh, retail, retail store inspections and compliance checks in the town of Red. Second. All in favor? Zero. All right. Yeah, take it down. Okay. Um, okay. We're to, to uh, road update. Road update. So, just really very little on this. It was a woman who had come um, come for it last month that said that uh, her dog had eaten poison on October 9th. I don't know if you all remember this. So there was a woman that was, um, I guess the rat poison looks like a specific dog treat. So, um, well, that's was, smart. I don't have a dog, so I'm not really <laughs> sure what these dog treats look like. But the square, they're like little green squares and they're all ribbed with a hole in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's what they look like. Okay. So um, her dog had eaten it, and she's had several tests. It cost her $525 for the dog to get tested, and everything came back clear, and the dog is fine. Was this the one where, the, where she thought it was on the sidewalks? Yes. And I think both you and John went did separately. Site visit yep. separately. Yeah. And at the time that, that we went, there wasn't anything, so I don't know if that was the only one, and the dog happened to eat it, or if somebody had cleaned up the rest, or what had happened, but there was none at the time of the inspection. So the, the, the dog um, is fine, but did they test the dog for the substance itself? She said that she had several tests and it came back clear. Okay. That the dog was fine. Okay. Her exact words. Probably don't test the dog for the particular, they just look for symptoms, right? I can follow up and find out. Sometimes they need the vomit because my dogs ate something that costs like 
two dogs cost me like five hundred dollars to make them vomit. The only thing is they might oh, draw like bleeding times because yeah. it's it? It's an anticoagulant. Yeah, yeah, it's coumadin. Is it coumadin? Yeah. Like warfarin yeah. Yeah. is rat poison, so it's, it can increase their bleeding. Do you want me to follow back with her on that or? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just curious to see if it was what the procedure was to find out if there was actually nothing in the system or if the dog's just fine. I don't know how, how they handle it. I don't know how big their dog was. You know, if a bigger dog, maybe it wouldn't have affected it. Sure. It's like 70 pounds. This might be a naive question, but so our concern is that somebody has used rat poison and they were not allowed to do so, and then the dog having eaten it is the evidence we're not sure because another report had come in that due to the rains that were right around this time it might have somehow slid down their property right but that is part of it too you want to make sure that the licensed professionals yeah. are, that are fading out there on, on public property on private property excuse me and public um, potentially improper use yeah any other? Um, and since um, no, October 15th, so over a month, we've had nine complaints, which we were getting a lot every day, like a couple of dozen every day or a dozen every day, and now we're down to nine. And we're still in that general uh, vicinity that we No. Nope. has been spread in every one of them. Every one of the nine has been in a different area. Really? Than, than the, the original yep. uh, vicinity. Okay. Um, do you have a map of that? So? Uh, I can get it. That would be great. <laughs> and I think if you could email that to all of us, that would be... A map uh, of... Just where all the, all the instances are. Just curious to see it on... Originally, it was pretty contained to that, um, that southwest area of town. I think what we have on the website puts some information. Can you put it on the website? I don't think it is. Go ahead, keep going. I'll pull it up on the screen. Okay. <clears throat> What is typical? <laughs> like for this time of year, oh, do we have any rack? Probably. I don't think it necessarily is oh, no, typical. No, no, it's typical. And once it gets public attention, then you get right, that's more people right. on the website. It's so sort of hard to pay more attention. And there's right, definitely exactly. been an uptick. Um, I think last time we talked about it correct, there was also an uptick on the bordering um, the area that it was in for Woburn was having some issues yeah. on that same side that Reading was having the issues. Yeah. Um, so and I know no, a number of other towns have gone through Melrose a number of years back had a really big uptick in it. Wakefield has as well. I think pretty sure Stoneham has also. So it, it seems to be not just a city problem anymore, but it's spreading more to the suburbs um, in recent years. But I don't think it's been a typical um, in, in general. But like I said, we don't know what's being important or not. And that I think kind of skews the typical uh, aspect of it. Pulling that up, you have something in the meeting minutes too? So that, yeah. Yep. Um, so at our last meeting, Laura had Jeff had sent out a list of all the minutes for the board meetings dating back to September 9th, 2010. I was able to locate 19 sets of minutes. Those were fine and could be posted. There was four sets that need to be approved today that date back to 2015, 14, 12, and 11. Okay. So those are on our list of those things. Those are on our list to, to do afterwards. Right. Okay. All right. I to <coughs> update you on where the list stood. How many were there total that we were absent on? We found 19. I don't know. Okay. Not one. I mean, it was like 27 or something like that, but 32. That was a lot. I want to say it was the lyrics, but don't. Yeah. I think it's, it's not that important. And I, I think part of um, in one of our last meetings, I know I said I'm going to try to um, go back and look to see if some of these minutes, what we think happened uh, with some of these minutes is that the Board of Health attended another board's meeting, like um, to the select board's meeting. And in that instance, we wouldn't actually have minutes kept on our own but we would what we need to do is if we figure out that that was the case we need to put in our minutes reference select board minute from x date to, to see how the board of health was the topics for the board of health so 
Um, I think now that Laura's found these 19, which is great. Yeah, we're down to 11. Down to 11. Okay, so now I can cross reference those 11 and see if, in fact, that was the case. Um, after talking with Laura in regards to this, really our obligation is to try as hard as we can to discover it, essentially, and discover as many as we can. The ones that we just cannot find, cannot discover, um, she'll post it as such that the reasonable effort was, was given to try to figure out what these minutes, where these minutes were and, and that was not able to be discovered. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll kind of get as many as we can, essentially, and then we'll, um, we'll just have to fill in the rest with that disclosure statement. About 19 was good. That's really good, yeah. Good place to start them. Yeah, it was a high number. Yeah. No dice? Nope. Okay. Not a big deal. That can always be something we can look at. Um, Future. Just, I'd like to keep. I think it's a good thing to keep that on, on from a map standpoint to see as the map evolves as well too. Is it does it look like it's coming in uh, to different areas? I, I want to keep an eye on that. My last three things are minutes, the letter, and in 2019, on in November, we have to change the date of the meeting. New date reflected in here. Exactly. <laughs> I was just going to throw off my whole year. But there was a holiday I had missed, so okay. we're going to change it to November 4th, 2019, unless someone has a problem. I don't think that's anything we have to approve. Right. Put it on the calendar and I'll book the room. Now, if for some reason, like, you know, as we get closer, if something comes up and a lot of you can't make it or we need to change the date before. Sure. Notice we can change that. Right. If I know there's no, I can't expand. Does that affect any voting? Um, yeah, no, because we have two associate members, right. so if we need okay. to, we can we can elevate one of the associate members to a, a voting member for that particular purpose, uh, for whatever they're voting on um, for that particular night. Yeah. So it doesn't doesn't necessarily affect it. Okay. Minutes. Yeah, uh, well, why don't we? I, I'm sure David has probably read through that now. Why don't we move on to the natural gas instruction letter to the governor? Uh, Emmy had uh, kind enough to draft for us. Well, has everybody had a chance to uh, read the letter? And maybe, um, maybe they'd be good because we have some new members. You want to give a quick background into why we're, we're sending this? Oh, yes. So, um, thank you for showing up. Wait, by the way, this is an excellent letter. Um, yes. So there are a lot of issues you've heard about natural gas having to do, of course, with the disaster in the Merrimack Valley and, the, and methane emissions for, you know, as a climate uh, problem is a, a, a global warming gas and, and gas leaks. Um, this, this particular issue here about the health effects recognizes that, uh, that natural gas comes into our homes, you know, that, that either through the stoves or through our furnaces or whatever, whether it's burned or whether it's just leaking out of the pipes in our homes, we are exposed to what's in natural gas. And, and, uh, and we noted several of those things. I mean, this, this, we are using frack gas from, from uh, you know, Pennsylvania. So it's not just what's in the gas. It's also what's in the rocks in Pennsylvania. So that, that so we're bringing up uh, substances that that are used to actually frack the gas, to actually create the fractures. You know, toluene and and, and uh, various various other um, kinds of organic chemicals that are used to force it. Uh, but then there are also things things like um, radon and radium. You know, that actually that have nothing to do with the gas, but they're in the rocks and they come. And when the gas comes out, they come out. So so there is a, a study that has been done. It's actually in progress right now, looking at what's actually in natural gas. There are over a hundred toxic or radioactive um, chemicals in um, in, in uh, natural gas. And natural gas is 95% methane. So we're talking about what's left. But the what's left is is part of the issue here because that's because that is in our homes and, and, and we are breathing it. You know, and, we, and so that's this. All these letters do, before um, Thanksgiving. There was a group of some 77 uh, letters from, went from boards of health and the group to the governor to talk about this issue. And, and all they're all they're asking is what you're asking you. 
attributes and all your recommendations here, which is do a, do a real assessment of the health effects of natural gas and keep the, the, those results in mind when you consider um, adding new infrastructure, new gas pipelines, new gas networks, and so forth. Uh, and that, that's really where this is coming from. This is getting, this, and this is all coming from boards of health all over the state saying, look at what is, what is in the gas and whether we want to expand the infrastructure. Now, our infrastructure is already pretty expanded, but um, we, there's a huge effort to try to stop the, the growing use of natural gas. So 60% of our uh, electricity is generated from natural gas. Uh, a huge amount of our home heating is done with natural gas. And, and uh, you know, if you, if you saw the, if you, if you were one of those people that was not looking away on, on Friday, you saw that, you know, these, that what's gonna happen with our, with our climate is disaster if we don't get off fossil fuels. So there are a lot of reasons to do this. But some of them are immediate, and, and your letter points that out. I would say um, on the the only thing I noticed was uh, Reading leaks um, on 2017 was 95, um, and and I've got, so I'll leave you this this leak data that we presented to the to the um, select board in June, and, and that, that shows you like number of leaks and and uh, well, that's all that's that's all the same. That's not oh, different it's things. Oh, it's all the same. Oh, sorry. It's, 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 a, it's a packet. But, Got it. So I mean, so Emmy probably needs to see that. So that's that's not a big deal. That's not the important part of your letter. Sure. The important part is the part at the bottom, and so forth. So I think this is this is excellent. Now the the climate advisory committee did did uh, I think I maybe already told you did did vote on this and endorsed having the, the board of yeah, health send a letter. Us, uh, yep. So we're we're excited, and, and I'm really glad that you've decided to to take this step. And I and I think. Uh, Maybe the governor will notice too, you know, because I think that we've got to be a little more serious about about the infrastructure. We were surprised how how, how easy it was to have a complete disaster in Lawrence, Seriously? right? Yeah. You know, and 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 it's these little things that we don't even think about that we take for granted that we need to be more alert to. And this is this is something that does that. So thank you. Can I ask you quickly where you got this? So, so all of the gas companies report their data to the DPU at the end of the year. Okay, so that's from the DPU. Okay. Um, yeah, that's at that, the D. That's the DPU. So at the end of the year, that data is available. It's it's actually a list of, of by um, by address, and and so that's that is a summation of. of, of what, what went on in Reading for those various years. What you see is that we're making no net progress. Like it's 95 at the end of 27, it was 94 at the end of 2015. We're not making any net progress on repairing our leaks. We are generating about 40-ish leaks each year. We're repairing about 40-ish leaks this year. It's probably gonna get worse now because, you know, National Grid um, had the lockout. So they, you know, they, they've shut down much of their repair work. Then the governor put a moratorium on National Grid not do anything that wasn't an emergency repair. So um, the, the number of leaks is going up across the state right now because of, because of that, at least in the national grid territory. So um, I'm sure it's going to be different uh, in, the, in the next report that will be coming out. It, it's data as of the end of the year. So it'll be data the, as of the end of like 2018 will be reported to the DPU by March. And that's what I'm not sure. Okay. And then you're going to be interested to look at the numbers to see where they are then. Yeah. Yeah, it's scary. Um, I think that's probably about, that's about it. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really have any other edits other than that, that count, and that's not really the, the meat of the letter. So give me that edit again, David, just for you. Where, where you oh, yeah. like in the second paragraph, it says 146 yeah. leaks. It was that's, that's it's actually 95. It's 95 and then 36 of which were repaired. Repaired, yeah. yeah. And 36. Yeah, okay. I mean, no, that paragraph also has 60, there are 60 percent greater leaks than previous estimates. Well, this is very, this is true. You know that that this these are these are leaks reported by National Grid to the DPU. But if you go out and do your own leak survey, if you if you have the equipment and you drive up and down the streets, there are significantly more leaks than than what than the official list. And and uh, further that, that when they repair the leaks, the the, the the repair only takes about a third of the time. So that you know, it's just it's just not a good thing, uh, and that's why that's why they're out replacing major sections of the uh, the network, uh, the distribution network, with the the new gas, uh, new plastic pipe. That's what they were doing 
in Lawrence when they when they screwed it all up, right? They were they were installing new plastic pipe to replace the old infrastructure. Reading Reading has the same um, low pressure cast iron infrastructure that they have up there up in Lawrence and Lowell and Boston. That it's the same, you know, it's it, it's because of the age of the town and, and the industry that we had here. We got in at you know one of the early adopters. So the issues that they have, and we have the same kind of issues that Boston had, and it won't really go away until um, the mains are replaced with, uh, and then the services are replaced with uh, new plastic pipe. Okay. Thank you very Sorry. much for informing us on that, David. Again, let me thank you for putting this together. Is there any, uh, does anybody have any comments um, in regards to this? Obviously, we're, we're going to be voting on to send this uh, to the governor's office um, tonight. No? Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to send this letter on behalf of the Reading Board of Health as amended with the uh, with those two numbers, 95 and 36, added in um, to Governor Baker's office. I have a second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of sending the letter? 3-0. As amended. <laughs> Will you resend me the letter and I'll send it out or will sure. you send it? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, all right, so we already talked about, well, we kind of talked about the tobacco. All that's left is minutes on right. my end. Uh, uh, minutes we have also, I think, uh, contrapass. Contrapass, right? Yeah. Um, that's why don't we, very fast. Yeah, I would say, why don't we do that? Because <laughs> minutes go quick, too. And yeah. Typically, we do those at the end anyway. So, I mean, the floor uh, shows. Contrapass really fast. Uh, apparently, the EPA actually just removed the restricted use pesticide label. Uh, and it takes, apparently, states another maybe three months to catch up to that. Um, that may change pricing. Okay. When I did talk to the distributor, um, he didn't suggest that it was exorbitantly expensive. He said, oh, you know, with all of these things, it's usually only, you know, 20% of the cost of the entire project is mostly labor. So I don't know if maybe the Somerville cost was really just because it was a pilot program. There was something special going on there. So I think it's something that we should still keep in the back of our heads mm -hmm. for next summer. Okay. Is everyone aware of what contrapest is? Right. Contrapest. We should, we should, we should do a full back <laughs> of <laughs> Um, so contrapest is this uh, chemical that uh, you put in a bait box just like a normal rodenticide, but it uh, forces female rats into premature menopause and it's processed through their liver in under 30 minutes. So um, they, they don't reproduce and when other animals, if other animals eat them, they're less likely to have any negative effects, unlike the rodenticide, which typically stays in the system for a very, for like six, 14 days, something very long. So um, it's considered potentially a much safer way of dealing with the rat population. I think it was pretty successful in Somerville, but the cost issue was Problem. And it's one of those things that I think you just sort of can like hit, and then I think they said it dropped the po rat population by about 50% in like two months. So maybe you just hit it once, and then that sounds you know, like a yearly thing. thing you would have. It depends. I mean, it's yeah, not like it every year we have. Going. Yeah. So, the, so if you have a longer winter and it's colder, they don't reproduce quite as much. So yay, we have cold snap. <laughs> so the, the, the only interesting part, so it's it still be limited to our property, right? right. So yeah, yeah, we, we don't have purview of a private land <laughs> to bait, and, and I don't know if there's even a mechanism to give them. This, I, don't, I don't think I don't think we can actually hire people to go into private plant as well. If they invite you, I think there's a way um, that if 
you have a, an approval granted. So uh, there's a kind of a, a multi-step process where if we did have something like this, there would be some sort of um, a legal document that says I'm allowing you to yeah. access okay. my property yeah, yeah. so that it's crystal clear. Yeah. And then the company could go on the property. Okay. But the question becomes what with the cost. Right. And there's a chance that this will become sort of more mainstream mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that, you know, your garden variety pesticide Pest professional may yeah. be adopting be able this to, anyways. Yeah. 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 Okay. So and I can find out from the distributor. I, the distributor did send me a list of companies that I could get pricing information from, but I figured I would wait because we weren't going to be doing that right now. Right. Um, and, and maybe they'll have an idea next year if, it, if it's necessary, which pest company is maybe using this product. But. So right now there isn't a funding source in the budget. For <coughs> right. So, but, but that doesn't mean, I mean, you could go back to town meeting, you certainly could, ask and for the money if there, you know, if there was a situation that required it. Um, so that's hopefully we won't need it. <laughs> right, right. Usually when you plan it, nothing yeah, exactly. ever happens. So. Okay. Would that, well, goes that way. <laughs> Would that budget process be the same or similar to if we offered incentives for people? Like you could reimburse them if they pay for it, for example, or a certain percentage of it. Yeah. So we would have to identify the funding source for that. Yeah. Whether it was a reimbursement or whether we were hiring a company to go on. Um, I know in the city of Revere, the mayor spent several hundred thousand dollars out of the city budget to do a very proactive um, road control program on private property. So it, it, it raises some questions about taxpayer money yes. on private property, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. That, that tends to get some questions. It always gets questions. <laughs> yep. Would it be possible for you to send all of us sort of more information about our budget, just so that we all kind of have an idea of how that structure? It's all on the website. Oh, it is. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can show you real quick if you ever wanted to. Um, so the FY19 uh, budget is what okay. we're in right now. That budget starts from July 1 and goes to June 30th. Okay. So it's FY19. Right now we're working on a draft of FY20 and that will, we're, we start the select board meetings next week. So if anyone's interested, public services is on for the first night, which I believe is December 4th. Sent them okay. I don't know if that email made its way, but um, yeah, December, Fourth is a Tuesday, so a week from tomorrow, um, public services will be presenting to the select board. So it'll be in the select board packet, okay. the draft, um, and that will be. And I think the packet goes on the website on Thursdays now. It used to go on so on that will detail all of the employees. I don't know how clear it is because it, we use a, a accounting software called Munis, mm -hmm. and so that's how the bre the budget is is developed at this point. Okay, um, it should be fairly clear because health is. Um, it's, not, it's not a big division. It's not a big division. Uh, how yeah. Many? Yeah. So you. you. <laughs> we actually, yeah, it's um, we're we're actually teetering on about three FTEs. Three FTEs. Yeah which our goal is four in the master plan. So yeah. we're, we're getting close and we're driving towards that. So, um, yeah. yeah. The, the expenses are, you know, like all, everything in public services, our expenses are a very small percentage, mostly salaries. Thank you for that update, Emmy. Um, I think at this point we're into minutes. So um, there are um, approval of minutes from looks like our last three meetings that we need to approve. But then, as Laura mentioned earlier in, in her report, there are minutes from 2011, 2012, 2014, 2015 um, that we also have to approve that were found but not yet approved by those boards. Um, now, 
just because none of us in this room were sitting on the board for those minutes, that actually doesn't preclude us from voting um, them in. And, and in fact, we should. If you want to make alterations to it, well, that will be a different story. <laughs> that, that may have some further discussion involved. So uh, let's take, go right at the top of the order, start with uh, minutes from uh, 829.18. So I'd like to point out on page four. Yeah. Second paragraph down under chair report includes e-cigarette and jewels. Jewels, auto-corrected to the wrong jewels. It's supposed to be J-U-U-I-L-S. That's the correct spelling? L-I-S. It's J-U-U-L-I-S. No I. There's no I. I didn't know it was an I either. There's no I. Anyone want to Google this real quick? It should take two seconds. Yeah, it's the Yep, J-U-U-L. No I S at all. Well, but is it plural? Oh, yeah, that's what I was figuring, is it was plural. So I was just going to say J-U-U-L, maybe apostrophe X or something. That's just being <laughs> it. Just yes. Either yeah. way is fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> We, we can just, we'll, we'll yeah. call, we'll call yeah. this one at the end, it hasn't been. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just had a couple of, of um, things as well, too. Just so you know, the Zoning Board of Appeals is the title of all of our minutes for 18. <laughs> so if you could change Zoning Board of Appeals, and, and this is going to be a, an amendment for, for all three of the 2018 minutes we have. Board of Health. Get to it, um, at least for this one, in regards to 829, 18. Uh, now, Ellen, I knew you weren't on the board, so I asked Emmy if she has any other revisions. Yep. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of um, 829, 2018 as amended. Second. In favor? Okay, approved. 9-18-2018, same, my same amendment at the top. Zoning Board of Appeals to Board of Health. And then also location, take out select board meeting room and put in, um, what do they call it, the auditorium, I guess, at the Parker Middle School. This was the one at the Parker Middle School. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So just put in, you have Parker there, but just put in for location, the auditorium. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep. Yep. Is it, 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 um, have you got anything about No. Change to that one? Is the spelling of the guy from the Chronicle Al Silvia? I A? Silva. Isn't it, is it Silvia? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it just all of a sudden looked. Sylvia. Sylvia. Yeah. Okay. And under submitted, it should have a, an A. Where are you looking under submitted? Yeah. Minutes respectfully submitted by. <laughs> All right. Kristen, we usually put you as the submitted by person, correct? Okay. So we'll just fill your name in there. Okay. Anything else? Um, motion to approve the minutes of 9-18-2018 as amended. Second. Okay. in favor? Approved. 10-15-2018. And just the same one at the top there, this is the Board of Appeals, change the Board of Health. I have all the changes, I think. Any other changes? Yep. Anybody else? Okay. 
Um, let's make a motion to approve the minutes of 10-15-2018 as amended. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Zero. All right, now we get into the fun ones. So, um, unless there, anyone has uh, an issue, I think the easiest way to do this is just to lump them all into one motion. Uh, since none of us were on the board at the time, I don't feel like it'd probably be a good idea to change any of them. Um, and this is just kind of getting, helping, uh, getting up to date for our town clerk does need to make sure that he has these posted and reviewable online for people you know, go online until we actually approve them. So there's kind of a little bit of a fell through the cracks loophole here. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve uh, the minutes from 12-9-2015, as well as 2-26-2014, as well as 12-26-2012, and 1-28-2011. Second. All those in favor? Zero to approve those sets of minutes. Okay. Um, covering everything on agenda, unless anything, anyone else has anything they want to do, bring up. Yes, no? Emmy, did you want to talk about the MAD? Oh, um, I might end up, well, I, I guess I can just summarize a little bit, but I'll mostly end up uh, compiling something for people. But, um, uh, we do have an account with MAHB, and Jean and Laura have the generic password, username and password, and then you can set up your own uh, personal accounts with them. Their website does have, in the, in the resources section or program section, it's the program section under certificate program. Um, it has PowerPoints for a lot of the past presentations from these annual workshops or whatever. Um, those happen once a year every November. Um, really useful. Uh, so the MAHB provides um, legal education and assistance, uh, no legal advice per se. They can help draft regulations. Um, if there's, there are things we're interested in or we have questions about, um, they can look through records and see if other towns have enacted certain regulations. Um, and make sure that everything's above board with state law, although boards of health really have a tremendous amount of power, actually, um, which you don't really think about. Um, in Massachusetts, Massachusetts is weird because we're very decentralized, so we have 350 boards. Um, there are 3,000 in the country. <laughs> 60 insane. in California. How many in California? 60. 60. Yeah. So <laughs> good and bad, right? Lots of local power, but public health doesn't really respect borders. <laughs> um, um, so I would definitely encourage people to check out their website, um, attend if you're still here uh, next November, try and attend one of these if you can. Uh, it's really great for networking, uh, hearing about current topics. Um, and they have a manual that they are just in the process of revising now that should come out in January or February. And I'll let you all know when I get word. <laughs> um, Mostly what I saw was just, uh, in the orientation, was just um, what our general responsibilities are, which I will summarize and send to you. They also had a section on legal authority, which basically is you have a lot of legal <laughs> authority. Um, and then uh, she had a section on vaping, actually. Um, uh, but it's sort of becoming a little bit moot with uh, us not having any tobacco, adult tobacco or vaping stores at least at the moment. But it's something we could consider, you know, it's something, maybe, I don't know, are we allowed to prevent, or is that a zoning thing? I'll prevent. Your board of health, you can decide what's, you have, you're coming. supposed to do what's in there. Okay. Interests of public okay. health, and like you said, you have a lot of power and a yep. lot of authority because of that. Um, 
they had lots of other interesting topics that I just couldn't go to all of them. So they have a section on rats and a section on PFAs and water and opioids and teen violence. So definitely per peruse their website. Um, the their attorney is pretty awesome. So <laughs> she is she's pretty great. And she will she can come and support uh, and and help with you know whatever we might need help with. So she can attend public hearings and, um, and work with town council. So she's a uh, useful asset. What was her name? Uh, Cheryl Sparrow. Oh, okay. oh yeah. And then Marcia Benes is the person who is sort of your first contact into association. And if we need it, if we wanted to get something on the Coalition for Substance Abuse, we can do an in-house training and they can come. Or the teen violence, she can come as well. Yeah, in, in the past, and if we had a relationship, well, I know we have a relationship with our car, so do we ever have a direct one where we sent board members to there? The liaison, we had a liaison. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah. probably a good thing uh, moving forward, because our CARS is a great, uh, a great organization here in town and really aligns with just about everything you know we're looking at uh, from a health yeah. standpoint. Um, so that, I think that's something we should definitely pick up and, and, and advocate. Um, Maybe we, can I, can I make something that's not on the agenda? <laughs> uh, I guess we could. We, we're just talking about, we're not talking about policy. No, it's it's unexpected within 48 hours. Yeah. They're fine. Well, I have been in contact with her many times. We've been, I've attended the meetings. I went to speak to her about this prior to coming. She has no problem coming to train us at any point in time. Okay. I've worked closely with a counterpart of hers in Malden, so that's not wrong. I'm already in contact with Erica, so. Okay, do you go to all the meetings? I just don't go to all the meetings. <coughs> yeah, I think it'd be good for, um, um, from a relation standpoint to have somebody uh, that goes to all the meetings. I've gone to a few, but I've been right, So I would, I would, if there's anybody interested in being such a liaison. I will do it. Can I do it or not? Well, I figured one of the board members. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <yes. laughs> um, yeah, I want to look into like a schedule. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's look into that and see if this, if, uh, if someone has some interest, we can uh, you know point that person as the liaison at the next the next meeting. Put that for an agenda. Be great. Thank you. Is there anything else? Let's get a motion to adjourn. Seconds that one. <laughs> All those in favor. Three zero. Motion adjourned at seven thirty one. Thank you.